loves. Here I go again. As you would expect, I am stuck behind something large that's towing something large. Blue sunshine. Oh, hello. Oh, I thought the large thing was going to bugger off, but of course it's not. Three tunnels in dappled sunlight. Not a bad old world, really, is it? Okay, my lovelies. So, as we burst free of the woodland and emerge onto the bright, open uplands of the peak, let's uh, let's see where we are and what we're doing. It is Monday morning. Uh, my uh, my car is telling me that it's 11 degrees. Uh, I am wearing my intermediate fleece, but I have played it safe and gone for a thermal undervest. If it gets a bit nippy in that yard, I can tell you. That's right, three points. Released in 1983, what is the one word title of the only number one by Spandau Ballet? True. True. It's true, you're right. Where is he from? Not a clue. New Zealand. from Australia again. Unfortunately, you're close, but not quite. You're sort of uh, one island out. It's New Zealand. New hey! Zealand he's from. I've never even heard of Which year did this week's top three have Baker Street by Undercover at number three? It's My Life by Dr. Alban at number two, and Ebenezer Good by The Shaman at number one. 92. Uh, yes, it is. It's 92. Well, well done. Finally, the songs Lucky in 2000, Don't Let Me Be the Last to Know in 2001, and Overprotected in 2002 were all hits for which singer? I'm not yeah, a bastard Britney Spears, you are right. Good stuff there, Chris. 24 points. How's that for you? Better than me. I got bloody 12. <laughs> I Jesus. Never, never can tell you. That's, that's, a... that's rather striking. I was a young man in my what, very early 20s and I was kind of struggling to, as everybody does at that age, just to get to grips with who you are and what the world is and what makes sense and what to do and how to do it and how to feel and how to cope with the things that you're experiencing for the first time and that are difficult and, you know, just the normal stuff that we all have to deal with. I used to do two After things. After 300 yards, turn left, town lane. Let's turn you up. I don't know where I've got you on. I don't need you. No, that's the wrong button, isn't it? volume down. Excellent. Yeah, there were two things I used to do to get everything back into perspective. And the one was I used to drive to the top of the Mulvans, which were, I suppose, my local hills, or the nearest hill of any note anyway. And if you sit on top of a hill and look down, and of course everything is, um, oh she was nice, everything is very small and you can see a lot of it and life is just going on and 
it kind of puts your own issues or thoughts or whatever into some sort of perspective because you just instead of a microcosm where all you can see and all you can feel is your own stuff you see a bigger picture of, and you get the idea that you know life is just going on and the other thing I used to do was to drive to the nearest seaside which with where I was living and brought up the nearest seaside was um, Burnham Breen and I used to go to Breen and at night and sit and watch the tide and you kind of think well that tide it's been coming in and out for years decades centuries eons before I came to be on this little spinning ball and it will continue doing so long after I'm gone so it must kind of know what it's doing and so you might as well just go with it because the tide knows more than we do so you know life and the tide will take you to various places and you have to just be okay with it and you have to roll with it and you have to breathe and you have to stay afloat and try and enjoy it and I just got or I get every time I come over that little brow where it looks as if you're about to drive off a ramp off the end of the world and suddenly that plateau that vista with the you can see over to the Pennines and you can see Manchester and everything is just laid out for you and that always gives me that sense um, it's kind of a perspective but I don't know it also gives it, me anyway a sense of opportunity because you can drive into that you can be part of it and it's an opportunity every day is an opportunity to take pleasure I didn't always used to feel like that but now I do every day is an opportunity to take pleasure if you choose to do so and I pretty much try to do so there some rambling thoughts from Monday morning and we're back at Broadbottom Viaduct and I do love it and one day I'm going to get a train over that bad boy. Greetings! Right, well, <clears throat> it's time for mustard to go and do parenting duties which means I've got just over an hour to myself and I'm going to first blow my nose and then we are going on part four of the wretched bloody Rover 75 keys oh fuck key saga thing and we're going to try and bring that pimple to a head. 
fingers crossed. First of all, we've got to try and get out of this junction, and that's easier said than done. I can park in here, look. Nice and easy. Right, let's go and see if we can have any joy. Or are we going to have to head into Rotterdale? This is now my favourite shop in the world. Not only has the lovely lady in here brought an end to the wretched ongoing Rover 75 key saga, but if you have a look in here, it is like an absolute little motoring and DIY treasure trove of a place. And amongst everything else they've got, they've got a full range of autoglim there. So as they've finally brought an end to the rented key saga, and I feel I owe them for that, and as they have the full autoglim range, then I'm going to make this place my official autoglim suppliers. And every Monday, I'm going to pop in here and I'm going to add another piece for Bob, the inexpertly constructed palace of motory delight. In fact, I've just bought a padlock for him while I was here as well. So, if you're anywhere near Milne Road and you need anything of a DIY stroke, house stroke, motoring nature, come here. Gold Lane, 106 Dale Street, Milne Road, Rockford. There's the telephone number for you. And tell them that Mr. Boaty sent you and she might give me a discount on my auto balloon. Well, what a find that was. That really is definitely my new favourite place. And the key, it works perfectly. And do you know how much she charged? Five pound. What an absolute bargain. Let's head towards some green bits, shall we? Let's take a second to behold the spectacular joy of the key. Oh, it was a long time coming, but... It's here at last.
I enjoyed that. And who knew? I wouldn't have known if I didn't look at the map. Who knew that we are literally a stone's throw from the motorway? Oh, now that's something I like to see. A cattle grid in the motorway. Oh, it's the Rainbow Bridge. Oh, this is fabulous.
right then, my loves. The day ends much as it began with me stuck behind something large, towing something even larger. And it's been a good day. I've enjoyed it. Um, I'm a little tired, but it's been fun. In fact, it's been a fun last week or so. Um, though I am looking forward to a couple of days where uh, I don't really need to do much in terms of actually leaving the cottage apart from going to work. In fact, I think I'm going to be spending the next uh, few days doing quite a lot of editing. God, as slow things go, this really is slow. 19 miles an hour. Oh, 20, he's pushing the boat out. Not his fault, bless him, of course, is it? So, I guess um, that's about it for this Monday. Um, thank you for your company, as always. Wouldn't be the same without you, but then you know that. And you know that you mean the absolute world to me. Um, have a fabulous rest of the week. And that's about it. It's good night and... I will look forward to seeing you next time. And with that, it's onion time and that's a lot. <laughs>